reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found him just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them and said, take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks and gave it to them and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen, before he would do anything of great importance, whether that would be to give a retreat, to give some talk, to do his television program, or to speak on the radio, would spend two hours before the Blessed Sacrament, two hours. And if in, he was in a place where the church was locked and he couldn't get in, he would go by the wall of the church nearest to the sanctuary, as close as he could get to where he believed the tabernacle would be, and he would make his two hours before the Lord standing next to the wall. This is how important the nourishment of the grace was to the Venerable Archbishop. And so too with us. It is, in fact, the heart of the Christian life. And it is, in fact, a magnificent mystery. First of all, in our Christian confession, we hold that the second person of the Blessed Trinity took flesh from the Blessed Virgin Mary. God became man. And if this wasn't inconceivable enough, he became the very food that we eat. Not just as a sign, not just as a symbol, but substantially, in fact, nourishment for both body and soul. One of our brothers, Father Peter Hanna, he was a Presbyterian before he was Catholic, and he showed up at Mass one day, went to the back of a church, and after the elevation of the host and chalice at the consecration, he said to himself, I have just experienced one of two things. Either I have experienced the greatest miracle that is conceivable, or I have just experienced the greatest blasphemy conceivable. The Vatican Council describes it in the context of the Mass as the source and summit of the entirety of Christian life. And in fact, all of the sacraments are ordered to it. But why would God do this? Why would God become food for us? person in human life at its most intimate moments. Consider baptism. 
the sign of new life, of birth to eternal life, and of cleansing or washing. What more human activities could you conceive of? The mystery of life and being born and the daily activity of washing and cleansing ourselves so that we do not spread disease amongst the population, but also so that we are kind to our neighbor. It's especially important for the brothers to bathe. I, I always hope that they do. <laughs> the most ordinary moments of human life. Consider anointing of the sick at our frail, human moments of suffering and sorrow. God approaches us for healing and sanctification. And so those who are sharing in the St. Peregrine Novena understand this moment most intensely. Those who suffer with cancer or have friends and family who suffer for cancer. When God approaches them in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, that healing of body and soul is so important, so intimate, so beautiful. And so likewise, our Lord approaches us in the most holy Eucharist in sacrifice and in meal. And all of us in our human life sacrifice. It might not be bullocks and oxen. Our neighbors might have an issue with that. But all of us sacrifice. Parents, how much do you sacrifice for your children? Time, comfort, money, sanity, all sorts of things. Life is filled with sacrifice. Christ came to us as a sacrifice, dying upon the cross for our sins. And then that sacrifice is represented to us at every Mass throughout the world. And as meal. It's the very center of family life. In ancient culture, in fact, the meal was a moment where you incorporated foreigners and other people into your family. It was a moment where you had peace, even with the enemy. they became family for that moment, that gathering, that meal. And so likewise, when we participate and share in the Most Holy Eucharist and the sacrifice of the Mass, we manifest truly in our flesh the fact that through our baptism, we have been incorporated into the family of God and are co-heirs to the kingdom with Christ. Simple, yet profound. And so we are grateful. We are grateful for today, this feast, in honor of the most precious body and blood of our Lord. And that gratitude expresses itself in so many ways. Not just being here to offer the sacrifice of the Mass, but it extends further into Christian devotion. I would encourage you, like Fulton Sheen, to spend time before our Lord in the Most Holy Eucharist, gazing upon his sacred visage to allow yourself to be radiated by his divine grace and his presence, to be enveloped by the sacred silence of the mystery of God so that he might speak to you intimately in your heart as he communicates his very life to you in the spirit. In so doing, we begin to participate what we will share for all eternity with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven for all.